this because it keeps me from like theming the yoga classes always to something like yoga or some of the Hindu mythology or whatever it is. And you know, my practice has expanded to include um, so many other teachings. And as long as it's a spiritual practice and I'm breathing and I'm moving, then I feel like I am doing the yoga that I come here for. Um, so I opened up this, there we go, we're back, yay! <laughs> um, so yeah, it was from this Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind book. And I spent the morning moving furniture today. And I realized that I did not, um, I did not have proper form. <laughs> I was not bending in a way that I should. I didn't do my yoga practice this morning. Um, and so I wasn't as like activated and, and turned on. So, um, when I opened up this book, it came right to the section about bowing, about bending over, about this practice. And a lot of times in yoga, we are, um, bowing. We're doing these forward folds. We're doing these prostrations. So I'm just going to begin by reading this. And for those of you just joining, um, grab a mat. If you have one, you definitely don't need one. You're welcome to do this yoga practice just on the floor. Um, this is more of a flow class, so there will be some standing poses. Um, I do teach a restorative yoga class every Tuesday and Thursday from 3 to 4 mountain time. Um, so if you get into this practice and feel like it's like more than you're wanting, just come back Tuesday or Thursday, 3 to 4. But for those of you that would like to do a little yoga flow right now, join me on this self-care train. I went on a walk around the neighborhood. And now I'm going to do a little yoga flow for my hips and my hamstrings and we'll end with a nice deep relaxation. And then I personally will be moving into the bath for an Epsom salt bath. So you might want to do that at home too. But I'm going to begin with this reading. And so that way those of you can kind of get set up in your space if you want to join for some yoga. And this um, book is talking about bowing. It's like bending this um, devotional practice. It says bowing is a very serious practice. You should be prepared to bow, even in your last moment. Even though it is impossible to get rid of your self-centered desires, we have to do it. Our true nature wants us to. After Zazen, we bow to the floor nine times. By bowing, we are giving up ourselves. To give up ourselves means to give up dualistic ideas. So there is no difference between Zazen practice and bowing. Usually to bow means to pay your respects to something which is more worthy of respect than ourselves. But when you bow to Buddha, you should have no idea of Buddha. You just become one with Buddha. You are already Buddha himself. When you become one with Buddha, one with everything that exists, you find the true meaning of being. When you forget all your dualistic ideas, everything becomes your teacher, and everything can be the object of worship. When everything exists with your big mind, all dualistic relationships drop away. There is no distinction between heaven and earth, man and woman, teacher and disciple. Sometimes a man bows to a woman, and sometimes a woman bows to a man. Sometimes the disciple bows to the master, and sometimes the master bows to the disciple. A master who cannot bow to his disciple cannot bow to Buddha. Sometimes the master and disciple bow t together to Buddha. Sometimes we, we may bow to cats and dogs. <laughs> In your big mind, everything has the same value. Everything is Buddha himself. You see something or hear a sound, and there you have everything just as it is. In your practice, you should accept everything as it is, giving to each thing the same respect given to Buddha. Here is the Buddhahood. Then the Buddha bows to Buddha, and you bow to yourself. This is the true bow. If you do not have this firm conviction of big mind in your practice, your bow will be dualistic. When you are just yourself, you bow to yourself in its true sense, and you are one with everything. Only when you are yourself can you bow to everything in its true sense. Bowing is a very serious practice. You should be prepared to bow even in your last moment, when you cannot do anything except to bow. You should do it. This kind of conviction is necessary. Bow with the spirit and all the precepts, all the teachings are yours, and you'll possess everything within your big mind. So I just wanted to start with that reading and um, the practice that we'll be 
going through today is a practice that I like to um, I like to do when I'm trying to overcome obstacles. I'm kind of weaving some different traditions here today, reading a little bit of Zen and then tapping into this um, the yoga practice. And um, so this practice is going to be um, a, a little bit of bowing, a little bit of energy to get the hips activated, and then we'll be dropping into some deeper stretches for the hips and the hamstrings. And so um, the flow that we'll be going through today is a salute to Ganesh, which does include some bowing. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So find yourself comfortably on your mat. Find a comfortable seat and just sit up nice and tall. Close your eyes. And just begin to take a few deep breaths. In through the nose. And out through the mouth. Maybe your shoulders come up. And roll down with each breath. Slowing down the breath. The deepest breath you can possibly take. And the most full and complete exhale you can possibly take. Two more just like that. Make a sound. Last one. And allow your breath to return to normal. Now, as we move through this practice, this modified version of a salute to Ganesh, the idea is that we're bowing in appreciation and with intention to this idea of the removal of obstacles. So I invite you at this time to just set your intention as to what obstacle or obstacles you wish to be removed through this practice. Letting this practice be one of devotion, spirituality, magic. So take a moment and set your intention on what obstacles you wish to be removed or to overcome. And once you've set your intention, please bring the palms to press together at heart center. We'll begin the practice with two cleansing breaths and one OM. I invite you to join in with this OM in your own space, your own OM, allowing the sound to fill your space, to cleanse and set the space, this place and time, in through the nose and out through the mouth. This time sigh. Uh, this time on. Uh, with the eyes closed, rub the hands together, create a little bit of heat, a little bit of friction with the hands. And place the hands over the eyes. Allow the heat of the hands to soften the face and smile. And gently flutter the eyes open and float the hands down. Let's go ahead and come to the tabletop position. So find your way into a tabletop position. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. I'm just going to move through a few 
cat cow movements here. Inhale, let's find your cow And on an exhale, round up through cat. Let's do three more big inhales. And exhale. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. And then come on back to center. From here, you can walk the hands forward, tuck the toes, lift the hips for a downward facing dog. Go ahead and pedal it out. So just bend one knee at a time. Pedal out the feet. Wake up the calves. Keep breathing. Ah, maybe bend the knees a lot, a lot, a lot. And straighten a couple of times. Belly hugs in. Do one more big inhale. And exhale. And from there, walk towards the top of your mat for ragdoll. Bend the knees, grab opposite biceps, let the head hang. Shake the head yes and no. Open and close the jaw two or three or four times to release any tension in the face. And you can sway side to side here. Circle the head, release. Any tension in the neck? I like a little bounce. Decompress the spine. Two more deep breaths. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. Release the hands, squeeze the inner thighs. Come on up to a halfway lift. So halfway lift. I might not be doing very many of these today since I was moving furniture and I'm kind of feeling it. But I always like to invite people not to lock the knees, but to keep them bent a little bit so that the glutes and the hamstrings can be active, especially since we're going to be stretching them out later today. Let's just do a gentle flow here. Big inhale. Exhale, dive deep. Let's do two more. Inhale up. Exhale, dive deep. Notice how my knees are still bent. Last one. Big inhale. And exhale. Inhale, reverse the swan dive all the way up. And exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, let's open the heart here. Inhale, reach. Exhale, soft knees, swan dive down. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Step back for a high plank position. Inhale, stay high or come to the knees. And exhale, lower to five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale up to the low cobra. Roll out the shoulders. See how that feels. And exhale, lower back down. Let's do two more big inhales and exhales. Just only come up as high as is comfortable for you. Last one. Inhale up and exhale lower down. Inhale up through tabletop and exhale. Please find child's pose. Knees wide, big toes touch. Release your forehead to the earth and take a few minutes, a few moments to tune in our first big bow today to ourselves in the theme of the class today. Just allowing yourself to bow in devotion to yourself, to your own practice.
From here, take the breath into the lower back, the kidneys. You might even come up onto the fingertips. Itsy bitsy spider fingers here. Two more deep breaths. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. Release the hands. Inhale up through tabletop. And exhale, downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, inhale, right leg reaches up towards the sky. And on exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, reach it up and back. Exhale, knee to the left elbow. Inhale, reach. And exhale, knee to the right elbow or armpit. Keep it high, yeah. <laughs> Inhale, reach it up and back. Exhale, step that foot between the hands. Squeeze the inner thighs and come on up. We're in crescent pose here to begin. But I'd like for us to move into warrior one. So stepping that foot in just a little bit. Toes pointed off towards the side. Big inhale here. And on an exhale, reach the hands back, interlace the fingers, and open the heart. This is our first heart opener today. We'll take it easy as we begin. Just a couple deep breaths here. Keep the heart lifted, the crown of the head lifted. Keep that right knee over the right ankle. Belly strong. Two more deep breaths. Last one, big inhale, and exhale. Inhale up through warrior one. Exhale, blossom open. You might widen your stance for warrior two. Three deep breaths here. Slow down the breath, two more. Last one, big inhale, and exhale. Inhale through reverse warrior, and exhale, windmill down. Right hand, left hand, step it back to a high plank position. So I'll probably keep shifting my position just for view, ease of viewing. <laughs> so from a high plank position, inhale, stay high or come to the knees, and exhale, lower to five, four, Three, two, and one. This time as you come on up into your low cobra, I invite you to reach the hands around and interlace the hands behind you. Palms pressed together. Squeeze the shoulder blades and lifting the upper body up off the earth. So side view here. Your hands are lifting up off the lower back. Your feet also lifting up off the earth. Three deep breaths. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale, release the hands under the shoulders. Inhale up through tabletop or high plank if you choose. And exhale, downward facing dog. Second side. Inhale, left leg lifts. And exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, reach it up and back. And exhale to the right elbow. Inhale, reach. Exhale, left elbow or the left armpit. You can keep it high. Inhale, reach it up and back. Exhale, step that foot forward. Stepping the right foot forward and off to the side just a little bit. And come on up into warrior one. So those right toes are pointing off towards the side. And the left knee stacked directly over the left ankle. Belly hugs in, belly strong. Inhale up. And exhale, lower the hands back behind you. Interlace the fingers, opposite pinky on the outside, so you can keep kind of switching there. Squeeze the shoulder blades and open the heart. 
for three. Breaths, not seconds, two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. Inhale up through warrior one. And exhale, blossom open, warrior two. So a little bit wider stance. If you are new to yoga and not really sure what's happening, just check in with me after this class. I'll be offering some beginner classes as well and happy to do one-on-ones with Zoom where I can see you. Live is a little bit different. You can see me, I can't see you, but Zoom's a great way for me to help if you're just learning. We've been here for a couple deep breaths, so let's just take one more big one together. Big inhale. And exhale. Inhale through a reverse warrior. And exhale, windmill down, left hand, right hand. And step back, high plank position. Inhale, stay high or come to the knees. Exhale, lower to five, four, three, two, and one. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Reaching them up and off the body. Feet come up as well for three. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale, release the hands. Inhale up through tabletop. And exhale, child's pose. So we're gonna move through that flow, adding in, for those of you just joining us, we're doing a little yoga flow, a salute to Ganesh. Um, the remover of obstacles. So feel free to join in. We're on our second round of flow. Just find yourself in child's pose. Forehead rests on the earth. Let's bring the palms to face up by the feet. And allow yourself to take three deep cleansing breaths in through the nose. And out through the mouth. <sighs> Two more. Mm. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. Walk the hands back up onto the mat. Inhale up through tabletop. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees and look at the hands. And exhale, step, walk, or hop to the top of the mat. Inhale up to a halfway lift. Exhale, dive deep, forward fold. Inhale, reverse your swan dive all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart, come back to your intention. What obstacles are you asking to be removed, to overcome? Keeping this in mind as we bow, we're bowing to these forces greater than ourselves asking for help overcoming these obstacles. But in the end, we're bowing to ourself for taking this time, for practicing, for setting the intention to get the energies moving in the direction of our choosing. In this instance, moving out of the way. When you're ready, flutter the eyes open. Inhale, reach it up, touch the palms overhead. And exhale, open the heart. Inhale, reach it up. And exhale, swan dive down. Inhale up to a halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. If you like moving through vinyasas, feel free. For those of you that are not sure what a vinyasa is, I'll just go over it here today. I like to come forward on the tippy toes just a little bit. On the exhale, it's lower halfway down, shoulders in line with the elbows. And on an inhale, pressing up. Tops of the feet and the hands. Exhale, rolling over the toes. Now we're facing dog. Going right into our flow here. Inhale, right leg reaches. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, reach it up and back. Exhale to the left elbow. Inhale, reach. And exhale to the right. Inhale, reach it up and back. Exhale, step the foot between the hands. Step the left foot forward and off to the side just a little bit. Inhale up, warrior one. Exhale, interlace the hands behind you. 
Inhale, open the heart, squeeze the shoulder blades, and on an exhale, your right shoulder comes inside the right knee, arms up overhead. This is a posture called humble warrior. Can you tune into that energy of what that means for you to be a humble warrior? Someday your head might reach the earth. Not today, my hips and hamstrings say, don't worry. We're getting into the stretchy part after this. Two more deep breaths. Last one, big inhale. Exhale, release the hands. Sweep them on either side of that right foot. Inhale up through warrior one. Exhale, blossom open, warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, windmill down. You can lower all the way to the earth like we did in the first two rounds, or you might move through your own variation of a vinyasa. Again, if you're new to yoga and would like for me to break these poses down a little bit more for you, just send me a message after class. Inhale, left leg reaches. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, reach it up and back. Exhale, to the right elbow. Inhale, reach. And exhale, to the left. Inhale, reach it up and back. And exhale, step it through. Set the right foot off to the side just a little bit. And inhale up through warrior one. Exhale, sweep the hands down behind you. Interlace the fingers behind the back. For those of you on Instagram, sorry, it keeps pausing. I'll have it better next time, I promise. All right, interlace the fingers behind the back. Inhale, open the heart. And exhale, drop it down. Shoulder inside the left knee. Arms up overhead for three. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale, release the hands. Inhale, come on up through warrior one. Exhale, blossom open, warrior two. Inhale through a reverse. And exhale, windmill down. Step it back. Flow through a vinyasa, if you choose. And come on back through downward facing dog. And please find child's pose. Knees wide, big toes touch, hips to the heels, forehead to the earth. Maybe you can bring your hands to prayer position behind your head. Walk the elbows forward. Find a nice stretch through the triceps. Three deep breaths. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. Slowly release the hands. Inhale up through tabletop. And exhale, downward facing dog. We're going to do one more round as a flow. So inhale, bend the knees and look at the hands. Exhale, top of the mat. Inhale up to a halfway lift. And exhale, dive deep. Inhale, reverse your swan dive all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart, come back to your intention. This time we flow. So the idea is to come back to your intention. For those of you just joining us, what obstacles do you wish to be removed? This is a salute to Ganesh, the remover of obstacles. Hmm. When you're ready, flutter the eyes open. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, let's open the heart. Inhale, reach. And exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, up to a halfway lift. Exhale, flow through some variation of a vinyasa for you. Or you can always come directly to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, inhale, right leg reaches. And exhale, needle nose. Inhale, reach it up and back. Exhale to the left elbow. Inhale, reach it up and back. And exhale to the right. Inhale, reach. And exhale, step it through. 
Step that left foot forward just a little bit. Turn it off to the side. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, interlace the fingers behind you. Inhale, open the heart. And exhale, humble warrior. One full breath cycle. Release the hands. Inhale up through warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse. And exhale, find your vinyasa flow. You can always come right to downward facing dog. If this feels like a lot for you right now, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. Mountain Time, we have a gentle restorative class. But for today, we're moving those hips. We're going to stretch them out in a minute. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, reach it up. And exhale, knee to the right elbow. Inhale, reach it up. And exhale, knee to the left. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, step it through. Set that left foot off to the side just a little bit. Inhale up through warrior one. Exhale, interlace the finger opposite pinky on the outside. Inhale, open the heart. And exhale, humble warrior. One full breath cycle here. When you're ready, release the hands. On your next inhale, up through warrior one. Exhale, blossom open, warrior two. Inhale through reverse. And exhale, windmill down. Left hand, right hand. Final vinyasa of the class. Whatever variation feels good to you. And you can always meet in downward facing dog or through downward facing dog. Please find child's pose. Three deep cleansing breaths here. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. Release the hands. Rolling up through tabletop. Tuck the toes, lift the hips for downward facing dog. I'm going to turn on an angle here because we're going to be moving into a pigeon pose and I want you to be able to see what's happening here. So on an inhale, right leg reaches up. And on an exhale, bring the right knee to the right wrist. Let's see what's the best way to demo this. Right knee to the right wrist. And the right foot comes towards the left wrist. It might come all the way forward. It might not. From here, inhale, open the heart. And exhale, come on down to the forearms. Pigeon pose. This is what I've been waiting for all day. <laughs> After moving furniture all morning this morning, I was like, oh my goodness, my hips need help. But, you know, I'm not the type of person that's just going to jump into a big yoga stretch like this without some prep work. So I went on a walk around the neighborhood, climbed some hills in my backyard, did a little flow. That humble warrior flow is a great way to activate the hips. And then here we are. Now we can drop into pigeon pose. Notice I'm rocking a little bit. Rocking and rolling a little bit. <sighs> just helps to really get that hip to release. Once you've settled in to your warrior, or I'm sorry, your pigeon pose, then you can maybe think about coming down two stacked fists, two stacked hands, or forehead to the earth. And just wherever you are, be here now, breathe here now. Pigeon pose for five. Two more deep breaths. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. And slowly lift your head. Plant the hands, curl the left toes under, straighten that left leg. And lifting up, open up that right hip, shake it out, roll out the ankle. And come on down, downward facing dog. 
Second side, inhale, left leg lifts. And exhale, left knee to the left wrist, left foot towards the right wrist. It may or may not reach that right wrist, it's okay. And when you're ready, come on down to the forearms. Ooh, I'm feeling it today. If you like to make a ooh sound, please feel free. You can rock a little bit forward and back. Rock and roll just a little bit. We did five breaths on the other side. I didn't start counting quite right away on this side, so let's do four more deep breaths. Last one big inhale. And exhale. And slowly come on up. Plant the hands. Curl the right toes under. Straighten that right leg. And reach that left leg up and back. Open up the hip. You can roll out the ankle. And find your downward facing dog. We're going to hop through to seated. So bend the knees and look at the hands. And hop through to seated. Woo! All right, so hips and hamstrings, that's what I promised. Hopefully you're feeling warmed up from the flow that we did. If any of you are just joining, now's an okay time to join for sure. So we're just getting in to some of our deeper stretches. So let's go ahead and come into fire log pose. So let's start with the right foot underneath the left. And we're gonna do our best to get the left foot on top of the right knee. So just stack directly on top. And then ideally that left knee is stacked over the right foot even if there's some space and it's not touching. So I like to do a little bit of muscle activation technique, especially when I'm really feeling it in my hips and they're like, like from today from moving furniture where they're like overly active. Sometimes just going right into stretching them doesn't work, but if we activate before we stretch, we can find a really nice release. So let's just start with the left hand on the left knee. And let's inhale, the right arm reaches up and back. So there's a little bit of a twist happening here, not too much. And then I want you to hug your left knee towards your body. So you're using your right hand to press it away and you're hugging your left knee in. So it's a squeeze, 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 and then release, pressing into it, twisting deep. So I don't know if you can see, I'm just on the tips of my fingers here, my right fingers here, just for some support, not really weight bearing, but just keeping me upright. So inhale, squeeze, 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 and exhale, press and twist. Do two more just like that. Inhale, squeeze that left foot in. Really squeeze and resist, squeeze and resist. And exhale, twist. Last one, inhale, squeeze. And exhale, release. Hold for two breath cycles here. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. Slowly come back to center, walk the hands in front of the legs. Notice if you already have created more space in the hips, so there's less space between this left knee and the right foot. But now the hands are in front. I like to sway. If you've taken my classes before, you know I really like to kind of move and sway. And you can slowly walk those hands forward. If you're nowhere near as far forward as I am, don't. Judge yourself, just be where you are, just be and breathe for three. Maybe the elbows come to the floor, maybe they don't too. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. And slowly start to come on up. And just notice, allow yourself to rest here for a minute, and just notice any space that you've created here. Hmm. Now we have the fun part of doing the second side. So you'll switch sides. 
So this time my, well, it's actually my left foot because I'm mirroring the audience, but your right foot should be on top if you're following along. And the right foot is directly on top of the left knee. And the right knee is working towards being on top of that left foot. So we're going to do that same muscle activation technique that we did on the first side. So inhale, left arm reaches up and back. And then we're just going to itsy bitsy spider the fingers. Just a little kickstand to sit you up. It's not weight bearing, just sitting you up. Beautiful. And then right hand on right knee. Now you're squeezing the knee towards you. This is activating the abs. This is activating the inner thighs. This is activating the glutes. And you're resisting with that arm. So inhale, squeeze, 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 squeeze. And exhale, press, release, twist. Couple more just like that. Inhale, squeeze, 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 squeeze. And exhale, release and twist. Let's do two more. Last one, inhale, squeeze, 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 and exhale, release. And slowly come back to center. Notice any space you've created, and then bring the hands in front of the legs. Woo, I'm a lot tighter on the second side. If you are too, that's totally fine. But we're just going to start to sway side to side, breathe into those hips here in fire log pose. I think about this pose is called fire log because the logs are stacked, right? but also because you can feel the burn. <laughs> and when you're ready, just start to come down just till you reach your edge. It's interesting being on video here because I'm noticing these imbalances in my kind of side to side um, sensations. This side is a lot tighter than the first side. So keep breathing. Maybe someday you get down on those forearms. Let's do four more deep breaths. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. And slowly start to come on up and just notice. I mean, I made huge progress today using that muscle activation technique. So if you guys have any questions on that, feel free to send me a message. Let's go ahead and release the legs. Shake them out. Learn my lesson wearing black pants on a black mat. We won't do that next time. <laughs> All right, let's just do an easy forward fold flow here. So inhale, reach it up. Exhale, easy fold. Do two more big ones. And exhale. Last one, inhale, reach it up. And exhale, fold and hold. You can point and flex the feet. Make some circles with the feet in each direction. And sway a little bit and breathe. <sighs> One more big inhale and exhale and slowly come on up. Let's bring the soles of the feet together, knees wide. Grab a hold of the ankles and scoop the heart through for Baddha Konasana. Big inhale here and exhale, draw the heart towards the feet. Maybe you widen the elbows and press in towards the knees. Maybe you flutter your wings or rock side to side. Let's do three more deep breaths. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. And slowly start to come on up. Bring the knees in together. Scooch towards the front of the mat and roll all the way down onto the back. Let's 
bring the legs up over the hips and the arms up over the shoulders. And just take a minute to rest here. This is similar to legs up the wall pose, but we're not actually using a wall here. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite poses for if I've been sitting all day or if I've been doing a lot of walking. Because a lot of times the blood flow, the chi energy can be kind of really held in the feet and in the hands. This is just a chance for us to let the energy drain to reverse the flow. You can take some circles with the hands and the feet. And the reverse directions. So we already did pigeon pose, but we're going to do figure four again because I just find them to be totally different. So when you're ready, bending into that right knee, put the right foot on the earth and left foot on the right quadriceps. So the hips are going to try and move, hug the belly and hold them steady. And when you're ready, grab a hold of the hamstrings or the shin. Hugging the right knee towards you, press the left knee away. And ooh, you can rock a little side to side if you want to. Figure three. Last one big inhale and exhale. Release the right foot to the earth and roll onto the right hip till the left foot is on the earth. Grab a hold of the left ankle with the right hand and reach the left arm back up and behind you. A couple deep breaths here. I went a little bit more in depth into this pose in my last Facebook Live, so. You can always go back and check that one out. That's a really early morning, kind of easy warm-up flow. Towards the end of the day, I kind of take an opposite approach where we'll do a little bit more intense flow and then get into the deep, stretchy stretches. Um, two more deep breaths. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. And when you're ready, come back up through center. Release the left foot. Find your center. Inhale, right foot reaches towards the sky. And exhale, right foot on the left knee. When you're ready, reach through, grab a hold of the left hamstring or the left shin. Head and shoulders still resting comfortably on the earth. And Drawing that left knee in, push the right knee away, and you can just rock side to side here, if that feels good to you. And breathe for three. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. Release the left foot. Roll to the left hip till the right foot finds the earth. Left hand wraps around the right ankle and the right arm reaches up and back. For three. Two. Last one, big inhale. And exhale. And when you're ready, gently come back up to center. I invite you at this time to take any last poses that your body's feeling called to do. I personally really like happy baby. You can grab the outside edges of the feet and draw the knees towards the earth on either side. And with happy baby, you can extend one leg at a time as you draw the other leg in. We haven't done a lot into the inner thighs today. So just be gentle if that is a movement that you're working with. Taking a few more deep breaths. 
just moving any way that your body feels called for. Grab a blanket if you'd like. We're going to be moving into our final Shavasana. So final Shavasana is going to be flat on the back. I like to use a bolster under my knees and just a very thin, thin, thin pillow for under my head. This is just because I'm home and have all my props. If I'm at a yoga studio, um, sometimes I'll use this stuff, sometimes I won't. So cover yourself up with a blanket if you'd like. Hmm. Finishing up any last yoga poses that your body is calling for. Find yourself flat on the back. actually going to double up the bolster under my knees today since I'm having some lower back stuff and that's a trick that you can do too. Having a nice high bolster under the knees can just help if your lower back is ever cranky like me moving, moving furniture this morning. So find your way flat on the back. Palms face up. Moving into our full body relaxation. Bring all of your awareness down into your toes. Relax the toes. Relax the feet. Relax the ankles. Relax the shins and the calves. Relax the knees. Relax the quadriceps, hamstrings, inner and outer thighs. Relax the hip flexors or groin area the outer hips, the glutes or buttocks muscles. Relax through the pelvis, the hip joints, the pelvic floor, the root. Relax the abdominals and all of the abdominal organs. Soften, relax, and do. Relax the diaphragm, the lungs and the ribs. Relax the intercostal muscles between the ribs. Soften the heart. Relax into the chest or pectoral muscles, into the armpits and down the side bodies to the lower back. Soften, relax, widen the lower back. Soften, relax, widen the middle back. Soften, relax, widen the upper back. Let the shoulder blades melt more deeply towards the earth. Relax across the tops of the shoulders and into the biceps and triceps. Relax the elbows, the forearms, the wrists. Relax the backs and the palms of the hands and into the tips of all ten fingers. And from the tips of the fingers, back through the hands, the wrists, the lower arms, the elbows, the upper arms. 
the shoulders. Relax down the collarbones and up the front of the neck, around the sides of the neck and up the back of the neck. Relax all the way up the back of the neck to the crown of the head. Relax the skull and the scalp. Even relax the hair. And then to the forehead. Let the forehead melt. Melt through the temples, the sides of the head, the ears, and into the lower jaw. Relax all the way down the lower jaw to the chin the lips, the tongue, even relax the teeth and the roof of the mouth. Through the roof of the mouth, through the sinuses, to the nose and chin, relax across the nose and chin, and into the eye area, relax the eyebrows, the eyelids, the circular muscles that lie in the eye socket. Even the eyeballs relax and sink deep. There's a gentle inwards and upwards rotation of the eyes. Nothing forced. Fully natural as your awareness comes to the center of the brain at the tippy top of the spinal column. Relax the brain as a muscle. Feel it softening. Allow yourself for a moment to come back to your intention, what obstacles did you intend to release today? Can you feel as if you've let them go, as if you've become <clears throat> lighter and brighter? Remembering the reading from the beginning of the class, this idea of if you can bow to each and every person in each and every circumstance, to the divinity within everyone and everything, then truly you are bowing to the divinity within yourself. And if you can see that spark of light, that intention, that purpose within you, then surely you can see that spark of light, that intention, that purpose within everyone and everything outside of yourself. Slowly beginning to wake up the body by wiggle the fingers and the toes. You can move the wrists and the ankles, move the head from side to side. Reach the arms up overhead, take a nice full body stretch. And exhale, soften. Bend one knee at a time, bring your feet to the mat or the bolster, and then just roll into the fetal position on either side. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a little squeeze here. Give yourself some beautiful love and attention and affection, even in this quarantine time. When you're ready, Gently press yourself up. Keep your eyes closed if you can. Sitting up a little bit taller than when we began. And thumbs into the chest, fingers spread wide. Feeling lighter and brighter. What obstacles have been removed? What divine reflections can you see within and without, even if in these times of great change and uncertainty? And sealing our practice with two cleansing breaths and one ohm in through the nose and out through the mouth. This time, sigh. This time, one. Peace in our hearts, peace in our words, and peace in our thoughts. Namaste.
thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm excited to see which two of you stuck around for the whole class. Um, I'll be just doing these classes periodically and kind of posting them and sharing them. Um, so if you ever miss a class, just like check back on the page. There'll probably be, you know, replays available. Um, I am doing, I mentioned this before, Tuesday and Thursday, 3 p.m. Mountain Time um, is a restorative class. So that's going to be totally different than what we just did. And really um, working into soothing and calming the central nervous system. I try to mix it up and have classes be different, but you'll find, you'll get into a flow of like which classes are, feel really good for you. And then I'm playing around with doing like Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning classes because I really love practicing yoga in the morning. Today was kind of a, I missed my yoga practice in the morning. I wasn't ready to do the, all the moving furniture. I wasn't like activated in my core and I kind of like almost hurt myself. Um, so I just on a whim was like, I'm going to do it right now. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that stuff. And then I love to hear from you guys. Um, tomorrow is Sunday, I think. I'm like losing track of days now. Um, but, um, if you guys are wanting to do yoga with me tomorrow morning, let me know what time you think might feel good for you. Um, I know Sunday morning probably won't be as early for some people, although who knows? We're like on quarantine. Everything's different. So I need to hear from you guys, um, when you want to practice yoga with me. And I'm just so appreciative for this opportunity to connect with people in a time when I think a lot of us are feeling really disconnected. So thank you guys so much. Hopefully your hips and your hamstrings are feeling better and I'll see you guys next time. Namaste. Mm -hmm.